हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू द सेशन ऑफ अप्रोच टू थ्रोम्बोसाइटोसिस थ्रोम्बोसाइट मींस प्लेटलेट एंड थ्रोम्बोसाइटोसिस मींस इंक्रीज इन प्लेटलेट काउंट नॉर्मल रेफरेंस रेंज फॉर प्लेटलेट काउंट इज वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर माइक्रोटर टू फोर लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर माइक्रोटर When platelet count increases more than फोर lakh फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पर माइक्रोटर इट इज कॉल्ड थ्रोम्बोसाइटोसिस थ्रोम्बोसाइटोसिस कैन बी स्पूरियस एट्रीब्यूटेड टू रिएक्टिव प्रोसेस और ड्यू टू द क्लोनल डिसऑर्डर्स द क्लोनल थ्रोम्बोसाइटोसिस असोसिएटेड विद माइलो प्रोलिफ्रेट नियोप्लाजम कैरीज मार्कली इंक्रीज रिस्क ऑफ थ्रोम्बोसिस Extreme thrombocytosis defined as platelet count more than ten lakh per microliter. Let's learn the causes of thrombocytosis. They are divided into three main categories. First is spurious thrombocytosis. It is relatively rare. It is characterized by the presence of non-platelet structures in the peripheral blood, which are counted as a platelets by automated cell counters. such structures can be needle like cryoglobulin crystals cytoplasmic fragment of circulating leukemic cells it can be bacteria or rbc microvesicles following massive burn injury the key is to study peripheral blood smear it can differentiate true from spurious thrombocytosis second is reactive thrombocytosis once the diagnosis of thrombocytosis is confirmed by peripheral blood smear review the diagnostic evaluation is done to determine whether process is reactive or clonal the reactive causes are infections like chronic infections like tuberculosis ac- acute bacterial and viral infections inflammations like rheumatologic conditions vasculitis inflammatory bowel disease celiac disease kawasaki disease etc in cases of tissue damage like thermal burn injury myocardial infarction severe trauma post surgical conditions hyposplenism and asplenia iron deficiency acute blood loss or hemolysis malignancies like metastatic cancer lymphoma and drugs like vincristine epinephrine glucocorticoids and rebound following myelosuppression this all are the reactive causes for thrombocytosis third is clonal causes once reactive causes are excluded and thrombocytosis is still persistent then it should be considered for clonal thrombocytosis myeloproliferative neoplasms like essential thrombocythemia chronic myeloleukemia polycythemia vera and primary myeloid fibrosis are main clonal causes of thrombocytosis thrombocytosis has multiple etiology and thus evaluation of patient with thrombocytosis required careful consideration of clinical history comorbid conditions other hematological parameters and past platelet count first ask for splenectomy history and family history of thrombocytosis second iron deficiency anemia is common cause of reactive thrombocytosis so first rule out iron deficiency anemia by doing iron studies this picture shows mechanism of increased platelet count in iron deficiency anemia low iron in marrow environment affect the megakaryocytic erythroid progenitors MEPs metabolism it attenuates extracellular signal regulated kinase signaling ERK signaling it slows the proliferation of erythroid progenitors and shift MEP towards the megakaryocytic lineage commitment and thus increasing the platelet count Other causes of reactive thrombocytosis are infection, inflammation, tissue damage, hemolytic anemia, etc. 
one should go for acute phase reactant analysis like crp to check for other reactive conditions peripheral blood smear examination is important for thrombocytosis we have already seen that it can distinguish between spurious thrombocytosis and true thrombocytosis if malignancy or blast cells seen along with thrombocytosis on peripheral blood smear then consider bone marrow examination and flow cytometry for diagnosis of underlying disorder if the features of myeloproliferative neoplasm are seen on the peripheral blood smear along with the history of erythromelalgia pruritus flushing unusual thrombosis and on examination splenomegaly observed then consider the testing of peripheral blood for jak2 calr mpl bcr abl1 mutation after testing if bcr abl1 fusion comes positive then it suggest chronic myeloid leukemia if bcr abl1 is negative and jak2 v617f is positive and epo level are low then it suggest polycythemia vera jak2 v617f mutation is present in 95% of cases of polycythemia vera 40 to 60% of patient with essential thrombocythemia and primary myelofibrosis if jak2 and bcr abl1 both are negative then consider the jak2 exon 12 mutation testing to diagnose small percentage of cases of polycythemia vera where jak2 is negative and exon 12 is positive if exon 12 testing come out to be negative consider the other panel gene mutations like calr mpl tet2 and perform bone marrow examination at for further diagnosis when extreme thrombocytosis is present when platelet count is more than 10 lakh per microliter consider testing for acquired von willebrand syndrome let's see treatment for this thrombocytosis first is reactive thrombocytosis it will be cured after the triggering event is resolved patient present with extreme thrombocytosis of unknown etiology and evidence of active bleeding or thrombosis is there platelet pheresis is performed to rapidly reduce platelet count second is clonal thrombocytosis treatment in polycythemia vera and essential thrombocythemia are focused on reducing the risk of thrombotic events treatment are cytoreductive therapy and antiplatelet therapy in polycythemia vera the treatment are phlebotomy to reduced hct the goal is hct is less than 42% in women and less than 45% in men other treatment are low dose aspirin and cytoreductive treatment like hydroxyurea these are the reference for this video thank you